In War Machine, the very earth shakes during fierce confrontations where six ton constructs of tempered steel and iron slam into each other with the destructive force of a locomotive. Only the bravest, most battle ready soldiers would dare enter combat against such odds. With weapons both mechanical and magical, the infantry of War Machine employ tactics and abilities that can turn even the most fearsome warjacks into smouldering scrap. And the um, arcane Tempest gun mages are no exception with this. So this is a uh, model I have chosen for the purpose of this tutorial. It's quite a, it's quite a generic one. And um, it's been primed in Vallejo Surface Grey, Surface Primer Grey, just 601, number 73.601 Grey. That's what it's been primed in. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the flesh and we're going to start with a contrast paint just for, to give a little bit of traction here on the uh, the skin that's that's what we're going to start with so a gillum flesh i'm just going to give that a bit of a shake up right now always give your paints a good shake first the good thing about uh, using this paint is that should it not work out, it's 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 thin, almost like a wash. So I can just go over it with conventional paint if that is what was required. So I'm just gonna go over the the areas I want to be flesh here. I'm, I'm trying to do this whilst avoiding the camera but of course no matter what position you put a, a camera in you know, for a of a tutorial for instance it's still going to be in the way so but yeah just popping this on here I do like the uh, simplicity of certain contrast paints but they really can speed up the painting process for you I was prepared to go the conventional route and you know you, you, you still can if that's your bag you know I might even do so on some of the others But I'm just carefully putting this on here. And I will do the same on the face. Once you got that in there. Yes, it's true, you hit other areas. But it's not bad. That's not a bad attempt there. And you can always clean up with, um, you know, further paints. Now, so that's that's the skin done. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to come on with some Dark Reaper for the bottom parts of, and the, the hat, bottom parts of the cloak there. And it, it's really up to you what way around you do this, if you want to do it this way at all even. And don't be alarmed at the dark colour. This will be lighting up later. It's only for a base coat, don't forget. And we will be lightening that up later. So I've... I've put some paint on to my uh, wet palette and I'm literally going to go around here, bottom parts of the, like these cloak, coat, tail, cloak things whatever it is he, he's wearing so i'm going to go with that i'm also going to go 
with the hat. Here, I'm gonna come in and do the hat. And a couple of other areas that I feel I might want to have this color in, particularly on the coat, such as there. There, now you could see I've done all the areas that I want to with the Dark Reaper. And as you can see, it's pretty messy at this stage, but that's okay. That, don't worry about that because we're gonna, you know, start doing a little bit of cleanup with each consecutive stage now as well. And now we're going in with uh, Signar Blue from P3. This is to do all the, the, the trims um, that are beneath the Dark Reaper that we've done. I'll show you a couple of the areas that I'm talking about. I'm talking about these areas here. Just here, just be ever so careful with this. Like so. So these areas here. So for that, a little bit of trim here too on the top. So again, be as careful and neat as you can as you come in with this one. It's your chance to clean up a little bit. Try not to go on the sleeves, they're going to be a different colour again. Okay, so there, you see it's a bit on the bottom here too. You know, these here and all these bits here. You might want two coats in some areas. But as I say, these, these are the areas that we're doing with this along here, like that, and up here. And we're gonna do the bottom of this coat tail here, or this robe, like so. And this side too, with the scabbard as much as I can. And up here too, for the collar of his coat. And this is what it looks like at this stage when we've completed that. All the, all the panelling has been done uh, with the Signal Blue. And uh, it's starting to look a lot better. Still looks a bit messy. We need to do the trousers next, so we're going to concentrate on that. For this, I'm going to be using Dawnstone. And, uh, you know, you don't, there's not a lot really to worry about with the trousers, just find them on the model. I mean, these models are quite nicely posed. So just find the trousers and paint them in accordingly. We are going to be, you know, we're doing all the base colors first. So it's gonna look a little odd until we get a, a shade wash of some description on it. And that will that will change the properties of how the colours look. So we're just painting the trousers nice and easy. Just take your time and we'll come back once that's done. So here is the trousers all, all blocked in. I don't know how easy it is to see against the other colours, the Dark Reaper and that. But his trousers are blocked in. Now I want to concentrate on these sort of cuff things that uh, they all seem to have on the ends of their arms. Uh, now, I think they are kind of like an ammunition holder, like a sort of almost like a bullet belt, but on the wrist, I, that's how I'm going to paint them. Um, and so for the base color on that, I want an off black, so I'm going with Corvus black, I could come with like black gray or gray liner, but that's what this essentially is. I mean, either will do you. Okay, so again, I'm using my Army Painter character brush here for all of this, this entire miniature. In fact, I'm even using my Army Painter wet palette. 
So I'm just going to come along and paint these cuffs. And obviously I will do that on all of them. So this is just the base uh, coat. So I'm going to do that for the one on, on that arm, obviously. And obviously for the one on the other hand here. Like so. Okay. So I'm just going to lay this down and wait for that to dry. So now the cuffs are done. I'm going to wait for them to dry thoroughly before I go on to do the uh, like the gold uh, layering on them anyway. Uh, so I thought it'd be a good chance to, to get the metallics done, uh, namely his sword and any other buckles or things you can you can see that may require you to want to put the um, your metallic on. So I'm going to use a lead belcher there for this purpose because as I said earlier just doing the base colors right now. So here you can see I have done the sword on this particular arcane uh, tempest made gun mage. He's got his sword out. Now some of them don't have their swords drawn you know so, so it's up to you uh, how you go about this i'm going to be doing a more of a gold and black effect on the bottom of the hilt and that so i've done the sword i've done the gun i've done a little chain clasp around here that keeps his top cloak on and i've done a couple of buttons and, and clips on the back of his coat there so what i want to concentrate on now are the leather casings that the guns go in and the sword scabbard. Now I'm going to be using a contrast paint for this uh, snake bite leather and I'm, I'm taking it straight from the pot so I'm going to have to be very extremely careful how I do this. Okay I'm just doing this for you know I think it will look I think it'll look good so I've got to be very, very careful how I apply it. So I'm going to be applying it on here, on these bits here. And I will be careful of uh, avoiding the bottom of the one to the left of that because he's still got a gun in that one. Okay. So I'm just going to go along and carefully do these. And of course the gun, uh, sorry, the sword scabbard here. Here's a tip I use. I hold the model like that with my uh, finger pointing out, put my pinky on there, I rest it on there. That way I can get a, a more stable base and I'm just going to run the brush down the scabbard of the, of the sword, the sword scabbard like this. If you find you get pooling or too much, just dip your or dab your brush onto a paper towel and then come back and soak it up like so. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave the boots. I might do them a different shade of brow, but I might do the straps or a couple of the straps here as well. I have it again, because I say, being very, very, very careful of this, like extra careful. I might have to come in and do a highlight on top of them, but you know, you get you get the general idea there. Okay, okay. So here we are at this stage, and it's all nice and dry, ready for the next thing. Now I've been looking at the box art, thinking I better do this like bandolier thing going on here, and it does actually seem to be the same color as like the holsters and that so with that being said i'm coming back in with some snake bite leather to do that so i just want to tidy that bit up a bit and uh bring it up to the same sort of standard for all of them so on here just going along these Bandoliers here. 
Now, on mine, the belt goes underneath. I've got a bit of a different colour, like a darker colour under there, but don't worry about that. I'm just going to go over the top of that and it just makes it look like a darker version. In shadow, which is absolutely fine, of course. I'm just making sure I've got the top top of this all done as well. I'm just dabbing up some of the areas. I don't want it to pull too much. And that's it. Just just bringing that back into you know up to speed more or less with the rest of it. Right, so that's the bandoliers done there now. So I've brought that a bit more up to spec with what I want. Now I'm going to do something surprising. I'm, I'm going to go in with um, a metallic again. I know I really should get like the hair done and things like that, but I want to get these metallic or some of the base of the metallics done. And I've got the, the, the silver of the sword. I want to get like the hilt of the sword with Balthazar gold. I want to start highlighting this, these kind of ammunition bracelets they got and uh, to apply the gold to the, uh, the scabbard of the sword as well. So I'm using my wet palette for this. So like I say, I just want the hilt of the sword here. Just want to have some metallic gold on that because I want the handle to be different, to be black. Um, let's turn him around and uh, I want to uh, put some on the bottom of the scabbard of the sword here like so and of course I'll, I'll neaten these up a bit once I've shown you so like I say doing this uh, the hilt of the sword here so tidy that up a bit in a moment and the top of the scabbard here, I want that to be uh, gold as well. Now coming in on these parts here, because this is the base colour. What I want to be the base colour for the, the ammunition bracelets, so that, and also going around the outside of them too like that okay okay so now the, the gold parts or well, the parts that I've put down as a gold base have been done I now might turn my attention to hair and for that purpose I'm gonna look at army painter all paint matte black so I'm just gonna come in do just do the hair He's got a bit of a moustache, this one here. You just, you just paint them according to, you know, what, whatever model you have, you know, or how you see fit, really. I mean, you might not want them to have uh, black hair at all. You might want them to have brown hair. But for the purpose of this, I'm giving him black facial hair. black moustache and I'll just go around and, and fill in all the, the tiny little bits of uh, black hair that I can okay so actually I also did the pommel of his sword in the black as well so we've got the hair done now and the pommel of his sword so that's good so the majority of our base colors done uh, a couple of things missing obviously uh, the gun and the boots so let's concentrate on the boots next so for the base coat I want to use Morn Fang Brown by Citadel. Okay, so I get some of that onto my wet pad. Then just a case of blocking in the boots because we're putting a, a dark wash over the top of them. So it's not gonna matter too much. Yeah, so just blocking the boots 
these. I mean, you could also use this to do uh, the hair if you didn't want black hair, but I, I quite like black hair, it just stands out. I don't know, about three feet from the tabletop more. All right, it's just blocking your boots and then we'll come back once that's done. So once that's done, yeah, you can see it's starting to look a, a lot better now. And we're gonna do another little thing to just um, add a little bit more detail in here before we come on to shading and basing. And that is we're gonna add a touch of contrast wildwood. Now you may think using contrast paints is cheating, um, and I've used, I've certainly used a couple on this model, but I, I don't think so. I think they're a great addition to your toolbox. The wildwood is certainly um, dark, so you know I'm, only, I'm not going to thin it down. I'm just not. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Well, first of all, I'm going to come in and do these little um, areas, the handles of the guns he's firing here. And also, just turn it over and I'm going to do the, the handle on the gun here. Like so. Okay, so we've got to this point here and what I am going to do is I'm going to take some glorious gold by game color and I'm going to put this on I'm going to use it to go on to the pommel of his sword and on to the base uh, or hilt is it even called a hilt on a gun of his gun and I appreciate it'll be quite bright putting it on, but I'm going to dull it down later on with a wash or a glaze of some sort. Just getting the, the color on there for now. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna pop it on like this, here, around the pommel. Make sure to get both sides of it, and then obviously onto the uh, gun itself. And once that's done, that's looking a lot better already. Ready to move on to the next step. Okay, once that is done and established, I'm gonna put it on one of the uh, shade washes, uh, or a shade wash, I'm thinking for the gray of his trousers or pants and this uh, section of his cloak here. And for that purpose, I'm going to use Basilicanum gray and water that down or thin it down with, if it focuses, technical contrast medium. Two parts of this to one part of this. So all I'm going, I'm still gonna take my really small brush, my character brush. And I'm just going to ever so gently wash it over the trousers. Like so. Oh, I'm also going to do this shirt on the front here. Like that. A little bit in the back there, like so. Then turn him around. this part here and over here it doesn't matter too much if you go over the, the lead belcher buckles that you've done either so it's just the basilicum gray and then on the top of here oh and also don't forget his hat either Coming on to that again as well. I know we've already done that, but we're just really establishing this now as a uh, like a main color here. Because let's face it, on a tabletop with any any scale of wargame, 
hats and heads I mean that's what you see mostly so from a distance you know you want to get that standing out like so and under his armpit here just a little blob in there because he's got a bit of a shirt there didn't just run that up there like so and there we are so this is the model at this stage he's starting to look pretty good now um got more highlights to do but to know that that's Let's make him look even better. An easy way is to do the base. I think we can afford to do that now. Astro granite debris is what I'm going to use. Now this paint, well, it's a text, it's a technical paint. So literally, you scoop it out. It's it's got literally texture. As it says, gonna use my texture tool from Citadel. Scoop a bit out, put it on the base, carefully does it, there's holes in the middle, that slit in the middle to deal with. And we'll just go around doing that just, just gently, when, when you get to an area like such as boots or whatever and you don't feel confident. I just turn the texture tool around and use the smaller end and you should be good to go you know so okay so got the main part of the astro granite down wait for that to dry and uh, we're going to put a wash on that afterwards and then dry brush it and then it'll look spanking okay so this is the point we are at as you can see i have done the basing on him now and just just a little bit um, i'll tidy up the rest of it later i just wanted to give it a little bit of i don't know sort of context to the rest of the miniature anyway now we're going to go on to some highlighting and for this i've chosen blue horror by citadel so i have thinned that down with a little bit of water and so I am just going to go around the miniature and just concentrate on all the edges here like so. I'm just going to go around and do that for the rest of the model on all the places I feel it needs highlight. So there, a bit there, obviously on the edges as I just showed you for the edges like here for example you know just here like this and a bit under here you know along here doing that and of course along the bottom too on the bottom of the coat around here just using the edge of my brush finally so don't rush it <clears throat> so just go around all the edges you want to highlight and we'll come back okay folks as you can see i've gone around with the blue horror and all the edges and onto the greys as well and a bit of his hat too so now i'm going to do this a little thing on his shoulder here going with uh, game color glorious gold for this one and some thinner to thin it down sticking with my detail brush i'm actually i'm just going to block this just gonna block this detail in here. Like so. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to look to highlighting some of the uh, the silvers on the like the sword and the gun here. 
So with that in mind, I'm going to use um, Stormhouse Silver by Citadel. I've already mixed it up on the palette. Um, so and I'm going to use a, a character brush. So all I'm looking to do here, for instance, is to just run my brush along the edge of the sword like so. And I'm just doing the, the very edges of of the sword there and like with the gun I'm just gonna do the very end of the gun here like so just like that and this bit on here and at the back uh, maybe just run a brush along the side here like that turn it over I'll do the same here. Okay. Oh, also don't forget the bottom of the gun where it's poking out of the holster here. So it's like a spec gun here. Some of some of these gun mages do. So just run it down there as well. Don't need to do both sides of the sword. Just the very top, maybe just the top of the underside, just where it tapers in here like this, and you can leave the rest, I think, like so. Also on the, like the hilt of the sword here, just a couple of areas there. Like that. Okay, once the silver highlight is done, we're going to look to this gold part, like on this pauldron here or whatever it is. Um, it looks gold in a lot of the pictures, so, you know, I've just done it gold there. I'm going to put a bit of a shade wash on there, and for this purpose, I'm, I'm using Fugan Orange by Citadel. I was, it was either that or I was going to do a Cassandora yellow, but I figured, well, you know, I quite like an orangey sort of gold. It's got like nice brown undertones. I'm using the same, I'm using a character brush for this. I'm uh, just taking it straight from the pot and applying it. And as you can see, it immediately dulls it down quite a bit. And when it dries, It'll have quite a good effect on it, so be careful not to pop too much on there. Also on the, the pommel of the sword here, I'm just going to put some on there. So, if you get too much on there like I've just done, just dry your brush off on a paper towel. Come in to touch the brush to the areas where it's pooled and it will soak it right up like that okay there we are so that's good and on the top of the uh, gun here there we are there okay okay once that shade wash has dried on there we are coming back in with some storm host silver baby from citadel just going to go around the edges the very edges of this pauldron type thing, whatever it is, here like, like so, just, just the very edges here, just catch them, catch them both sides, and this is where we're going to leave it. Um, now, this, uh, this point, you can of course go further with this if if you so want, but there he is. That is the final piece of the Arcane Gun Mage. And there he is. So, yeah. Let's spin him around a little bit. Of course you can go further. As I say, you can highlight all the leathers up a bit more. You can put a couple more highlights on there. But I think you'll agree for a War Machine model, this isn't bad. And uh, I don't think he's too bad at all. None too shabby, hey? 
it's, he's he's kind of that one there, isn't he, more or less? So, because I mean, War Machine is notorious for the players are notorious for not painting their models anyway, or very basically. I think I think this is a fair job for a War Machine model. Signar, Arcane Gun Majors, of course. If I'm playing War Machine, I play with painted models. And perhaps I will go further with these uh, in the future. But for here and for now, this is my Arcane Gun Mage for Signar. I think he's I think he's really good. I really do. Arcane Gun Mage. They I don't know how good they are in game yet. But like I say, that's him. If there's any other tutorials you'd like to see me do, or any other particular model, then you know hit me up in the comments below and I'll see if I can accommodate you that would be uh, marvelous if i could do that uh, for you that would be excellent so thanks ever so much for watching please like if you like dislike if you dislike share check out my patreon if you are able and get access to exclusive videos thanks ever so much for watching remember all brushes lead to all and i'll see you on another video bye for now folks bye bye